Hey, welcome back. It's time for another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jeller from Mr. Excel. We'll be joined by Mike Kervin from Excel is Fun. This is our episode 121. Min and max between two dates for each region. All right, today's question set in from YouTube. I have to find the min and the max between two dates for each region. How can I do this? All right, well, I'm going to do it using a uh, D min and D max. Uh, so those require a criteria range. The criteria range has to be set up with headings at the top and the values just below. So I'm going to build a, a criteria here of greater than or equal to ampersand the lower date and then also less than or equal to ampersand the greater date and then we're just going to build our um, first region with uh, Canada. All right, and we'll get the uh, formulas working first equal d min the database that's this data over here press f4 comma which field uh, we can say field 3 because it's the third field and then the criteria range is this range up here I'll press f4 all right so between those dates Canada 6770 copy paste We'll edit this one and change to a D max. All right, now the big hassle with D min and D max is it needs this big criteria range for each of these regions. Ah, but I'm going to beat the system here by using a data table. So we select this whole range and on the data tab, what if analysis data table, uh, we're going to ignore the row input cell, uh, we're going to leave that blank, and the column input cell that's these items. We're going to take one at a time and put them into this cell in the criteria range. Click OK, and there we go. There is our answer. Now, what's you know, this is going to look strange up here. Uh, so I'm going to beat the system. I'm going to do Control 1, Custom, and in quotes, I'm going to put my heading. So that says, hey, no matter what number is there, just put the word min. <laughs> and then here, Control 1, uh, Custom, and in quotes, put the number max. There we go. I was wondering about this corner cell here. I think it's okay. Yeah, we could put region back there. I don't know why I was kind of superstitious. superstitious thought we'd have to get rid of that because in a data table two, uh, where we have both a row input and a column input, that cell has to have the formula. Uh, but in this uh, particular uh, type of table where we're only specifying the column, I guess it's okay to use that heading there. All right, Mike, let's see what you have. Thanks, Mr. Excel. Wow, I love this D min. I love the way you locked the cell references and then copied it over and just changed the AX here. Absolutely beautiful. And then that custom number formatting and the data table. That is a lot easier than the way I'm going to do it. Now, if you didn't want to use D min, D max, criteria range up here, etc., we can do an array formula, right? But there's how many? conditions there's three and there's no max ifs or min ifs so we have to do some sort of array format now I'm gonna uh, look at a 2010 function so aggregate function and then we'll look at the old max and min with if 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 three conditions so we'll have to use three ifs let's look at the aggregate it came in in Excel 2010 it's a great function it can handle array calculations, and you don't have to do Control Shift Enter. Now, the first argument is function, so I'm just going to use the max and the min. Oh, wait a second. The problem with aggregate is the first 13 functions cannot handle array calculations. It's only 14 to 19. So what do we do? If we have max, we use large and say, hey, give me the first largest, large value. And then small, and we'll say, hey, give me the first smallest value. All right? Now, to create a single formula to copy down and over, I put the number 14 and 15. 14's for large, 15's for small. So I'm going to click in that cell reference. And when I copy down, I need it locked. But when I copy the formula over, I need that dancing ants to move to the 15. So I'm going to hit the F4 key. One, two, two times. Lock the row reference, but not the column. Comma. The second argument is options. And our array calculation is going to have some divide by zero errors. Beautiful option in aggregate. I'm going to say ignore error values. By the way, if you're not using an aggregate, if you have something simple like the sum function and you have some errors, just use aggregate and say ignore errors. 
All right, so the option, comma, and then there's our array. By the way, this argument has two ways we can use aggregate. This bottom one is if you want to add, like using the sum function, and then you just put references, right? And then option would be 6. Here, we're using the array option because we're using function 14 to 19. All right, so we have some numbers here and three conditions. So I'm going to first highlight all the numbers. Control Shift Down Arrow F4. Now we have max and min. And the min function, if we did normal Boolean multiplying of trues and falses in arrays, we get some zeros. And the min function would pick up the zeros. So instead of multiplying all of our arrays of trues and falses, we're going to use division. Now, we're going to take all those numbers and divide by three conditions. So I'm going to use two parentheses. The first condition, I'm going to highlight the dates, Control Shift Down Arrow F4, and I'm going to say any of those dates greater than or equal to the lower limit, F4. Now notice that'll give me a bunch of trues and falses. If I were to highlight this and hit the F9, I'd get the old famous 8,192 characters. That's all we can display error message, right? I can't show you all the trues and falses, but no problem. We're going to take that array calculation. Right there, we're doing a direct comparative operator calculation on an array of values. I'm going to take that array and multiply it by our second condition, Control Shift Down or F4, less than or equal to the lower value. Sorry, the upper value. Less than or equal to the upper, F4. And then finally, we'll multiply by the region column, anything in there equal to that particular region. Now, when we copy it this way, you need it locked. But when we copy it down, it needs to move relatively. So I'm going to hit the F4 one, two, three times. Lock the column, but not the row. All right, now why, are we, why do we have two parentheses right here? I'm going to close this off. Because we need this multiplying to calculate before the division, right? All right, so that whole thing. True, true, true times the value here. That'll pull this value out. So only when we have three trues will it pull this value out. All of those values will be there, comma, and we need a K1. Control Enter. Oh, what is so great about aggregate? Aggregate will make that array calculation. I just did Control Enter. I don't see any curly brackets up there, right? And copy it down and over. Now I can see, come to the last one and see, sure enough, it got all of my, all the cell references are working and the formula is calculating correctly. Now, we did 14 to 15. If you couldn't uh, have 14 to 15 in the cells, then we'd have to do two separate formulas. Let's go look at that over here. And we can see if we're doing max, guess what? We can do straight multiplying all the way across for every single value and array of trues and falses because zero is not going to uh, hurt our max calculation. If you're doing the min, there you go. We're going to use that division. Finally, if you had 2007 or earlier, or you liked um, this construction here, you can say max with three ifs. Three conditions, so three ifs. Only when it gets true, true, true will it pick out the value here in that value of true. All those values would be dumped into the max. And same for min. All right, throw it back to Mr. Excel. Hey, all right, Mike, that was good. I like the max if, if, if because it seems more straightforward to me. Although, I have to give you credit, the aggregate max doesn't do the array formula. So hey, let's just do large comma one. What a great way to go. All right. Well, hey, I want to thank everyone for stopping by. We'll see you next time for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel and Excel is Fun.